Hello. Today we shall be analyzing a very important theorem in quantum mechanics, the Bell's inequality, which has been consistently violated by quantum mechanics in every experiment performed. What is Bell's theorem? Imagine you have a beam of light. This light has a property called polarization, which allows the light to go through some filters but not others. For example, if you pass this light through a vertical filter, a vertically polarized light emerges from the other side. When you pass this vertically polarized light through a horizontal filter, which is perpendicular to the vertical one, no light goes through. So, if you pass light through a polarizer and it doesn't go through, then you know at once that the light is polarized in the perpendicular direction. If the light were to go through, well, then you won't really know what the polarization of the incident beam was, only that of the emerging beam. Now back to the theorem. Let's say you are given three filters, alpha, beta, and gamma. The light will either go through these filters or it would not. Therefore, there are eight possibilities. The light can go through all three filters or it can go through alpha and beta but not gamma or through alpha and gamma but not beta or it can go through alpha but not beta and gamma or through beta and gamma but not alpha or through beta but not alpha and gamma or through gamma but not alpha and beta or it will not go through any of them. We are dealing with linearly polarized light. These are the eight possibilities. Bell's idea is this, if you have a device that produces pairs of photons, that is, photons with identical polarization, and choose any two of the polarizers to measure the polarizations of the photons, you will have the following outcomes. We will put these in a table as well. You could pick up either alpha and beta, beta and gamma, or alpha and gamma. For the first case, we know that the light goes through all three polarizers, so you will get the same outcome for any combination. For the second case, since the light can go through alpha and beta, if you pick alpha and beta, you will get the same outcome, and a different outcome otherwise. So different, different, the same. Since the light cannot go through both beta and gamma, then you would have the same outcome if you chose beta and gamma and different outcome otherwise. Different, same, different, 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 same, same, different, different, same, same, same. Having the same outcome all the time doesn't really tell us much because it could mean that you just picked up the same polarizers. We are more interested in this section here. Here, you will have the same outcome six times. The total number of possibilities considered 18, so the probability of having the same outcome is one third. We can say that if you did this experiment, you should expect to have the same outcome at least one third of the time. The phrase at least one third is used because we did not consider the situations of all same outcomes. If we did, we would expect a higher probability. In other words, if you do this experiment, you should not have the same outcome less than one third of the time. This is basically Bell's theorem. I'm not going to go into the math of that. This is where things get weird. When this experiment was conducted, it was found that you get the same outcome at least one fourth of the time. Since one over four is less than one over three, it means that this experiment or the result violate Bell's inequality. Hence, there are no hidden variables and quantum entanglement prevails. Well, inasmuch as quantum physicists would like that to be true, but this Bell's theorem is fundamentally flawed in its assumptions. Let's have a look. 
Take a look at the results of the experiment again. How many times was this experiment run? 24 times. How many times did you get the same results regardless of the combination of the filters? That is the first and the last row, so that gives 6 times. How, how many times did you get the same outcome in conjunction with different outcomes? 6 times. And this is the region they were interested in. So, what is the probability that you will get the same outcome in situations where different outcomes are possible? That is 6 over 24, which is 1 over 4. And this is the result you get in the actual experiment, and it does not violate Bell's inequality. To get 1 over 3, as we got earlier, you have to say that the experiment was done just 18 times. That is, the region we mapped. But this is not true. You have just chosen a specific fixed set of results to disregard, to force a particular result. This is like saying you run this experiment a hundred times, but you don't want to consider all the results for your calculations, so you decide to cut out 20. But instead of doing so randomly, just like the experiment was random, you specifically select the outcomes you wanted to eliminate. Let's look at this in another way. Given that you always choose two filters randomly from the three, there are therefore three possibilities. The photons will go through both filters, the photons will go through neither of the filters, and lastly, the photons will go through one but not the other. You have to understand how the Bell's experiment is set up and what it measures. You have a beam of photon passing through a special type of filter that occasionally splits a photon into two identical photons. Each of these photons reach a detector and are detected. These detectors are connected to a counter which counts the number of coincidences, that is, the number of times signals from both detectors reach it, which means the number of times photons pass through both detectors. If the counter receives a signal from one detector but not the other, it will not record any count. Likewise, if you don't send in any photons, which is the same thing as saying no photon goes through both filters. So, the counter only gives a reading when it receives signals from both detectors. Now, let's look at our tables again. How many times will you have the same outcome, but this time, the same outcome meaning the photons never went through any of the filters? That should be row 4, 6, 7 and 8. You will have the same outcomes 6 times. What about the same outcome meaning that the light goes through both filters? That is row 1, 2, 3 and 5, which gives 6 times as well. And how many times will the photons go through one but not the other? That is 12 times. Total number of times the experiment is run is 24. So the probabilities for these possibilities are as follows. Now for the Bell setup, which of these outcomes is the counter measuring? Clearly, the ones where you have the same outcome with photons going through both filters, and the probability that you will get those results is one fourth. And that is exactly what the experiment reveals. This means if you run the experiment a hundred times, you should have coincidences at least 25 times. There is no violation of Bell's inequality. So, there truly are local hidden variables and quantum entanglement is a false concept. If you genuinely think I make a valid point here, please like the video and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.